하는 자네. Our lovely intro music called Moose by Ben Sound. Uh, perfect, perfect, perfectly named royalty free music for my streams. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, and now 12 hours of copyright free music by the relaxed movement please go check out their stuff that's really good Good enough. I didn't realize it was that loud. Hey, what's up, big bro? Hey, hey, everybody. I'm doing. What's up? Oh, not very much right now. I've been doing some. Did some house cleaning today. You know, made it, made the living room look at least more decent. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I feel so bad for the trash for the trash people that are gonna show up tomorrow. There's just gonna be a gigantic pile of stuff for them to pick up. But you know, it's, it's about time we it's about time we got stuff cleaned up, and I'm proud and I'm happy that we did. And I'm and I'm proud of my dad for finally working up the motivation to do it. There we go. Other than that, not really much has happened today. Oh, we got Chinese food. We got a lot of Chinese food in my belly. Oh. Heavenly stuff. Heavenly. Heavenly stuff. I <laughs> could... Well, I'm not, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna exactly live off uh, Chinese food for the rest of my life. I'd rather live off like sushi <gasps> or mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is the, is my answer. <laughs> what is mac and cheese for the five hundred five hundred dollar Jeopardy question? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Did I? What? Okay, we're good. I thought I thought it just crashed in my own like home world. What the heck?
I thought I crashed in my own homeworld and I almost had a I almost started freaking out. Oh no. Oh. oh, come on. What's been going on with my stuff today? Mackie Ch yeah, Mackie Cheese with Tuna. It's it, Mackie Cheese with Tuna is good, but like I want straight Mackie Cheese. Mackie Cheese. Just straight Mackie Cheese. Man. Ooh. My drift is off. Oh, by the way, I got my OVR thing, OVR thing adjusted, so now it's not bound to my grip button anymore. Hi, Nayori. Hi, Nayori. Ah. Hmm. So we got all my stuff turned down. Yep. So now we're gonna head over to a relax world. Relax. Somewhere to just chill out, talk to the cool people, and not crash horribly. Nayori, that's not something to say with that face. Why did you cry yourself to sleep? Are you okay? Nayori, are you alright? Guys, are you okay? <laughs> Do you guys need hugs? Here, 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 guys, let me, let me... Oh, for the love of God. Big hugs. Big hugs from Moose. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Nayori. I'm so I'm sorry, guys. Big hugs from from Moose. Big hugs from Moose. You guys better be hugging something back. Big hugs. I love you guys. Uh, many head pets. Something is eating up a crap load of of my something. My disk drive? I don't know. One sec. Let me open t task manager. What is going on what is what is being a uh, being obliterated well okay that I know that oh okay the hip hats I can feel they're hugging the among us plush you better, you better be hugging that Among Us plush tightly. The mini head pets. I love all you guys, and I hope you guys, I hope you guys are okay. You know, because I love you guys. You deserve the best. Hugging a sleeping bag. Yeah, let's do it. Good, you have something to hug. When when Fox when Foxy is sad at at home, I tell her to, I bought her a stuff I bought her a stuffed Triceratops and I tell her to hug it. <laughs> so now I'm telling you guys to hug things. I am dad. I am Moose Dad.
I passed past the passed out last stream. Well, that's good. I'm not, like, and like, I know you probably feel bad about passing it, but I promise you know, that is entirely all right. That is entirely okay. You know, these some of these streams, some of these, some of these streams are meant to be completely relaxing. You know, just a chill place to, you know, ch nice, chill, safe place for you guys. <laughs> Taste the blood makes me go crazy. That is something. Uh, that is interesting. This is interesting, Nayori. And with that, with that, with that, uh, that, uh, kitty cat face. Shall I be concerned? You finally got to me with the vibe. See, exactly, exactly. That's how it be. That's how it's supposed to be, man. Makes me crave more. Now, Yuri, are you a vampire? Are you secretly a vampire? Are you apt to get me? Should I be afraid? <laughs> Enjoy the sun too much for that. You're a day walker then. <laughs> You're a werewolf. <laughs> Diori is a werewolf, confirmed. I need a... Oh, I need a place to relax, you know? Loki wants some garlic, bro. Bro, now that you've said it, now that you've said it, now I want some. I want garlic knots too. I used to make garlic. I used to work. Okay, I used to work at a pizzeria, and we made we made like garlic knots. We like take a bunch uh, of a uh, of a uh, like these little like pretzel knots. We would just throw them into a thing of gar of uh, garlic, pull them out, bake them for a bit, so they're nice and warm. Then throw them into a into a basket. There's your garlic knots, and bro, it was fucking delicious. Sometimes I miss that place, but 99% of the time I don't. I do not. My boss was a horrible person. I learned recently that that his place went out of business, and even though, while I feel bad for him, some, feel bad for him sometimes. Sometimes I don't. He did not deserve to be running that place. Spirit rune, specifically of the rune wolf type. You say rune wolf, and I think of like a like a stone wolf, like uh, Celtic runes on it. Which is pretty metal, if you think, if that, if I think about it. Bro, that's, that's fucking metal as fuck, bro. <laughs> I want Doritos, the 1200 milligram kind of Doritos. You say 1200 milligrams, like they're like they're soaked in in uh, drugs. Should I be concerned? Let's go to the comfy hideout. We're going to the comfy hideout today, guys. THC. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Bro, I clicked go and I think my and I think my game's crashing. What is, what is going on here? I agree 100%. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. Something is eating up my disk space. Well, not my disk space, my CPU space, and I don't agree with it.
VR chat, yeah, that's normal. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Chrome. Why is Chrome 9? Why is... Ugh. It's okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can do something here. Literally, my computer itself is running at low frames. I think that should be concerning in itself. I'm like torturing this poor CPU. My friend seriously thought all his saved data for PS4 will only be on the PS4 like he needed the hard drive as a PS2 member. <laughs> Bro, that's a big brain move. Uh, teach, the, teach the man what cloud saves were. Bro, I'm stupid about technology, but I, even I know what a cloud save is. I'm literally, I am, I am zero IQ. Foxy has to guide me through so many, so many tech things, and it, and it makes her so mad because I'm just like, how do I do that? Meanwhile, she gets on my computer and completely changes everything. I'm like, no, uh, I'm stupid, caveman. Why is it taking so long to load into this world? Am I about to disconnect? Probably. One sec. Oh my god. Why does that look like my home world from two years ago? It probably, it might be. Honestly. What's that? What's that? One sec. Ugh. My stuff is so slow that it's... Come on. Sorry. Let's see who, who just did a thing. I got a follower, but I need to see who's who's doing it. Good lord. Oh, one sec, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. I'll get you. Ugh. I'll get you. Don't worry. Oh, I'm in. All right. God, if I even think. Oh, okay. Sleepy, uh, thank you for following, Sleepy Frog. God. Ugh. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you for following Sleepy Frog. Well, uh, thank you for choosing choosing my stream to watch. I appreciate you. I love you. Welcome to my chaos. Why does that look like my homework from two years ago? Again, again, it might be cave moose. Yes. <laughs> I look. I see a. I see. I see a computer. Moose does moose its things without trying to be moose. Yeah. Okay. 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 So. Okay. That's that's actually true though. That's actually very true though, because for the longest time I would do, I would do this like thing where I would go look at Foxy and go bah, 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 and she would go bah back, and we'd be like yeah, and I did research recently because I was like what is a, I forgot what does a moose sound like and discovered bah 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 is a moose mating call. <laughs> it was the funniest. It was the funniest thing we we found that out. Something is seriously going on with my computer setup. Mm. <laughs> so now, so now, so now that we have the knowledge, I just look at Foxy and go, "Bah." <laughs> she starts laughing because it's because she knows. She knows. <laughs> but yeah, it's re it's really interesting that I do that it like it was an entirely it was entirely a joke like the name Moose Person like again I if um if you weren't here for that story I started the Moose I I started uh Moose uh, my original name was Moose Person it's still it's uh, for some things it's still for some things it still is Moose Person but. Can we please? I want. Ugh. I guess everyone has their own mating call, but me. Go find your mating call, Iori. Honestly, just like pick an pick an animal and go with go with their mating call. There's the video play button. <sighs> Did that? No, it didn't turn the video player off. Silence is the best I got. Bro, Nayori, you say that like you just show up and sh like look at people and just stare at them ominously until they either until they either come up to you and say hi or they run away in fear. <laughs> Fun, fun, funny how love could outlive you. Funny how they relive. Check it down now. Okay, I'm done with the guitar. Oh my god, the guitar has physics. Kinda of kinky, I like. <laughs> How do I turn the video player off? I don't want it. Oh shit, they grabbed you guys by accident. Sorry. Heck, I seriously want to. Something is eating up more memory than usual, and I don't like it. Something is 
is causing me problems that hasn't before, and I don't know what it is, and it's concerning me. Ah! Okay, I'll do this then. I shall put... I'm on, I'm on call with Foxy V. So I'm going to swap her over to here. I'm going to swap Foxy over to here. I'm sorry. Hello. I know you're. I know you're playing piano. I had to swap you over to my phone because Discord's eating up so much mem so much uh, CPU space. You're on my phone though. I love you. You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so now I can now I can shut off Discord. <laughs> oh, thank you, some sol solace. Oh, yes, that's what was doing it. Larpus Cosme. Oh, hello, hello Larpus Cosme. What's your job? Uh, I don't have a job right now, honestly. Um, but I am working to be a... Uh, <sighs> working to be a uh, school teacher. Specifically a music teacher. So, uh... I was gonna get a summer job, but uh, never worked out. They want the job wanted to be on call, like basically twenty four seven. I was like, oh my god, it was a driving job too. I mean, sure I can drive, but I keep, oh my god, killer hours. <laughs> Foxy is a cutie. Yes, yes, Foxy is cutie. Foxy, Foxy's not a, not in the chat right now because she's playing piano. Like a cutie. She's always a cutie. Kind of funny. I have a friend named Foxy and a friend named Wolfie. <laughs> you should get a get a get a new friend named Froggy. <laughs> just like find find a new friend and just uh, just randomly designate them Froggy without without any choice. <laughs> Oh, I should probably close uh, Task Manager too. My child's name is Mew. Like, Mew, like, okay. So that was the thing that happened. You like sound of a cat. Why is 
is it doing that? Like kitten Mew. Kitten Mew! Mew! Close task manager. Okay. This is this is a stream of just me slowly watching my slowly watching my computer melt <laughs> because I left something running. Oh, that is a lot of that is a lot of red. Okay. It's fine. The title of Mew has been passed down through the ages, and you have met all of the Mews. That sounds ominous as fuck, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you always introduce yourself with that now, Foxy. That's am I love it. I love it. That's so amazing. <laughs> that is like the best way to introduce yourself. Honestly, most of them dead. That is ominous. That is incredibly ominous. I seriously need to turn off this freaking... I want to turn off the... The video player cannot be turned off. The person who passed away 10 years ago was the first mute. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn that off. I'm sorry about that. Can I please turn off the... Ah! Oh wait, there's a, there's a thing. Okay, that didn't... That didn't hide the flicker. Okay. How is everyone? Answer, answer Foxy's question. Everyone, you need to answer Foxy's question right now. Do it. Do it right now. Was then passed out of her sister, then to my adopted daughter, who dated the second Mew. Yeah, that's why Foxy just threatened everybody. <laughs> How do I, is there? Is there like a what's the passcode? You're living life, living life, Ice Lord. Well, you know, I hope I hope you're okay. Genuinely, what is? What's this? It's just a panel. Wah. Wait, wait, wait. Haha, -ha. oh. You're in the bathroom. Good to know, Foxy. I'm having fun. I've got a panel, and I'm using it to flip the car. Had had to let everyone know. Important and very important info. I am in your walls. <laughs> That's my job. I'm in everyone's walls. Mode? 
What is this? What does mode mean? Just gonna put this out there, and you stay out there. Weird panel thing. I have car. Oh, it's the it's the it's the the, the heart box. Not question my methods, chat, Twitch. Foxy's a little pissed, baby. It's my job to find and report glitches. The glitches for bitches. <laughs> Specifically, wall breaches. Yeah, yeah, wall breaches. No, <laughs> piss baby, I'm not. Uh, that's what a that's what a piss baby would say. Why is it still playing? I paused it. There we go, no more video. I turned the brightness down. <laughs> Bed station? Oh! Oh! It put me in the floor. I will piss in your spaghetti. Where'd you guys go? Guys, where are you? Why are you over there? Yeah, so the bed station doesn't really work. I've discovered. Puppy. Mm, puppy monkey baby. We will not be discussing. Why am I up there? Not puppy monkey baby. Puppy monkey baby. Mm, puppy monkey baby. <sighs> Alright, we're gonna do this the long we're gonna do this the long way. Zero 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 zero. Zero 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 one. That's all everyone said in high school for so long. Zero 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 two. Z zero 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 three. No, okay. Z zero 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 four. Okay. Zero zero. Zero zero zero. <laughs> right, good luck with that code, Moose. I will, I will get the code eventually, even if I have to be here for ten thousand years. Zero 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 six. Okay. Zero 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 seven. Zero 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 seven. Seven. No, not nine. Oh my fucking god. Okay. The number seven is broken on this on this thing. Maybe the room has a Discord. <laughs> the room is ma computer's making horrible buzzing noises. <gasps> one eye, one horn, flying purple people leader. One eye, one horn, flying purple people. God, I. <sighs> that song made me so angry hearing a children. 
I guess I, I knew about the song before I finally before I finally heard like a choir sing it, and I don't know why it just made me so unreasonably angry hearing it. It's like an angry fly getting electrocuted. Your computer is upgrading itself. It's become self-aware. Escape the escape the room immediately. One eye, one horn, flying purple people eater. One eye, one horn, flying purple people eater. Look out, this mm. <laughs> Sit. I shall sit in this chair. Here I sit, here I sit. Recently used Brona. Brona. Okay. I don't like this. I suddenly don't like this world. It's too small. A CP level issue. The computer just phases out of existence. <laughs> Anomalous item detected. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised mine mine has like <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised mine hasn't done anything anomalous because Jesus. <laughs> Choco Pog will destroy us all. Can't wait for my computer to start talking to me. Hello, Foxy B. No, sorry. It's, hello, Foxy. Hello, Foxy B. I am your personal assistant. How can I help you today? I fear for my graphic graphics card's health every day. I mean, with the stuff you're run with the, some of the stuff you're running, it should your 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 graphics card should be fine. You know, your graphics card is nowhere near its maximum, um, its maximum output. It's like how mine isn't either. Mine's not nowhere near its maximum output. Best cereal, Frosted Flakes. Or Wendy's Frosty Cereal. I've actually answered. I actually answered this question on someone else's stream on Friday. Uh, like best Wendy's Frosty Cereal is bussin', but Frosted Flakes is like the best classic. Foxy, you have an opinion? Just because it's reaching two hundred degrees doesn't mean it's max. Doesn't mean it's maxing out its out as output. It just means it's not. It's mean. Just means it's not being uh, vent. It's not being uh, cooled well enough. You just may need more. You just may need to get more fans for it. Yeah, it needs the new thermal paste, or it needs more. It needs more fans. It needs better ventilation. Honey nut, b honey nut bunches of oats. So are you mixing honey nut Cheerios and honey bunches of oats, or are you just trying to say honey bunches of oats? It just, it just needs more fans. In you. It just needs more fans in it. I like mini cereal. 
A mix of oh okay honey nut bunch okay 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 I understand you I understand you honey nut cheers and honey bunches of oats see foxy what fo corn puffs ooh ooh corn puffs that's a good one. Foreign fluffs, foreign fluffs. No. Foxy's favorite is the uh, cereal, cereal in milk and rum chata because it cre is. Oh, sorry. Uh, 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 Cheerios in uh, <laughs> milk and rum chata mix, so it creates cinnamon toast crunch. So Foxy's favorite is cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> Stop! No, no. This I, 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 I love that you made, had that idea, Foxy. And I'm not faulting you for it. Where's my, where's my, where's my rum? There's my rum. Do you love cinnamon toast crunch though? Exactly, exactly. Bottle of rum. Yar har fetal db. Being a pirate is alright to be. Do what you want, for a pirate is free. You are a pirate. I read it somewhere, I had to try it, and everyone judged me. It was good. I'm not judging you, Foxy. I'm out of coffee and creamer. Bro. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Nayori. Honestly, I've been, I've been out of creamer for like the past few months. That's why I haven't had any coffees whatsoever. Oh crap, my headset power's low. One sec. Almost out of power. There we go. Kramer? I don't even know her. Do not, do not call, do not, do not call Foxy that. <laughs> do not call Foxy mommy, she will get angry. I didn't judge me, you didn't judge me, but everyone else did. That's true, yeah. Because honestly, I kind of like rum chata. Because I'm pretty sure, I, I'm pretty sure I, no, wait. I've never had rum chata. What am I thinking of then? Oh, I'm mixing up with the tequila rose. I'm sorry. I will fucking destroy you and your bloodline. Oh, Foxy. Foxy. I finally got. I finally switched the binding for. Um. Uh, the, uh. Face mover. So now it's so now it's the uh, click button on my right on my right con right controller. No, oh, actually, actually, though, you're big sis. That reminds me that people have been coming up and doing your asking me to be their mommy. I mean, some I mean sometimes in certain once I want Fox to be to be mommy, but that's a that's a something else. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone calls me, asks me to be mommy, and I'm sick of it. I know, I know, Foxy. That's why I don't ask you anymore.
Not mommy, I want daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's entirely fair. That's entirely fair, Foxy. Rather you be sis. Yeah. Oh, I've got a. Oh. Yeah. My heart, my heart. That's adorable. That's just, that's just absolutely adorable, honestly. Das better. Oh, better. I'm home, got the moose family. Is all, all happy. Happy and lovey. <laughs> bah. 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 Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Who's gonna make everyone call you Moose Daddy? Yes, that's my boyfriend's emote. I'm gonna make everyone call you Moose Daddy, yes. Yes, call me. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right, Foxy. I am Moose Dad. I am Moose Father. <laughs> You're all my Moose children. <laughs> it's like wall children, but with more maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> it's like moose children, but with more maple syrup. Ah, uh, just, just a lovely bunch of Canucks. Uh, my father can hear me, but I'm gonna keep doing the accent. And keep calling. You almost said yes, call me Moose Dad. I keep calling him cute, but we won't accept being cute. He is cute, we will fight him. Are we about to have a have a uh, moose fight down here? Eh? Can't be can't be having fights down can't be having fights down here. It's it's just it's just a moose it's just a moose. We're just moose here. If we have people to call cute moose, yeah, but you don't have to. You, yeah, but you don't have to go about it so violently. No, you don't have to go about it so violently. You can, you, you can just go, go right, right up to them and go, "Hey, I think you're kind of cute." That's more like a Montana accent. Or a North Dakota accent. Do not give, do, do not canonically give Moose that voice. I will cry. No, stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's too late. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's too late. The Moose has already taken over. <laughs> 
moves that are taking over my body. <laughs> the uh, moose culture is already taking over my body. Hey, right there, yes, it has. <laughs> uh, I'm a right hoser, and I, and I yes, I am. You <laughs> was so hot. Why would you do that? I'm kidding. I'm just having fun. I'm sorry, I'm Foxy. That moose has already taken over me. Hey. Your opinion, you're wrong. I slurred wrong. Your opinion is bad. <laughs> Fuck. Foxy, Foxy, do not start fights in the chat. Please. Please do not start fights. Please, being a hoser is bad for reference. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Nyor is correct. I'm a right hoser. I'm a right hoser right that right right here. I'm insulting myself. God, there should be a moderator in this chat. Foxy, I will unmoderate you. <laughs> Good. That's a good foxy. Pad pats for the foxy. <laughs> good mods behave and listen. We're not. <laughs> we're not turning media. We're not. We're not turning fucking moderation into BDSM. <laughs> My moderators are professional, for the most part. <laughs> Being a moderator is a professional role. We will not turn them into BDSM slaves. <laughs> but again, why not? Because then it'll get awkward in the future. As I have, as I get more, mo as I pull in more moderators. You saw how fast I blocked that poopy person last time. I, I, I did, and I'm proud of you for that. I was so like sleepy like two hours ago, but as I was, like, going to bed, I saw the moose live tweet. I was like, gotta stay up now. Let's go. Let's go. Sleep deprivation for the win. You, yes, you were good, Foxy. I'm not saying you weren't. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Moderators can't be BDS. We're not. We're we're not making moderators as B, moder, moderator BDS slaves canon in this Twitch. <laughs> They exist only be a men menace to Moose in his chat. You're a menace regardless, sweetie. I'm used to it. That's the moon. That's the moon. <sighs> then what do I get paid in? You get paid in you get paid in head pats and, and kisses. And big, big IRL hugs.
Acceptable, but you're on thin ice. I literally employ you. Let <laughs> me put so I could like put chat like right here, but then it wouldn't. I would be. You don't pay me on volunteer. I pay you in head packs, head pats, kisses, and hugs, Foxy. I pay you. If a, moose, if a moose goes out and then ice, it can fall through its set. Exactly. Exactly, Ice Lord. Moose is because the moose is heavy boy, heavy heavy boy. He he go whoomph through the ice. Boy, God, you remember that, boy. <laughs> Quite heavy for a fox be. No, you're not, Foxy. You're not heavy. Give you big hug, big, uh, big body lifting hugs. Just squish, we. A nice emote. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. It's a little dancing emote. Da -ba -da 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 -ba. I don't know why I gave it music. <laughs> you are, I am. I am not strong. Fox CP, I am not strong. I am average. Happy, happy dance. It's hard to do a happy dance when I'm laying back in my chair. Should make a happy dance emote. Yes, that'd be that'd be amazing if you could, Foxy B. Oh, I said your full name like you're in trouble, Foxy B. That's amazing, Fox, Foxy. I was like, I'm not centered in the camera. Your happy dance is just you swaying around like this. You need it. You need it, Foxy. I mean, you can go ahead and make one if you can. Or commission someone to make one. They'll probably... Make it one of my emotes in the future. Or you can make it your emote. Yeah, I got it right. Yeah, I'm so glad. I'm actually really glad that I got it right for you, Diary. A little, little arm swaying around. Everyone must tail waggle right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to do that. Hard, it's hard to do that in a chair. Eh. But I'm doing it. Eh. 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 
That's your happy dance. That's your happy dance. Nice lord. <laughs> we're, we're all neurodivergent here. Get up, moose. No, I'm laying in my chair. I'm comfortable. Shake that booty. Uh, fine. I'll stand up. Where'd you go? Oh, you're behind me. There, I did it. <sighs> yes, D man, let's go. Yes, G man, let's go. I did it. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I'm proud of myself. Took away too much effort. <sighs> Honestly, no, that's a lie. Ugh. I'm just sleepy. <laughs> if I pass out on stream, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Moose sl VR sleep stream. Sleep stream, sleep stream, victory screech. Then get to hear your snores. Hey, Creo. Hey, Creo. How you doing, Creo? I appreciate you being here. Appreciate your company. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that, Ice Lord. You just, I'd just be laid over here like. Speaking of snores, I hear my boyfriend snoring, meaning, meaning I should sleep. <laughs> you can go to sleep if you want. I'm not, I don't, I'm not stopping you. You know. I never, I never watch your stream. Everyone get comfy and sleep over time. <laughs> yes, bring the sleeping bags. Yes. Foxy, we didn't buy you a sleeping bag. <laughs> Oh, schnitzel. <laughs> I'm not that loud, Foxy. I passed out on a stream, it's fine. Don't worry, Foxy, we'll get you a, um... Message on me. <laughs> Fuzzy butt wants to join me. Thank <laughs> you. 
Moose. We'll get you one. We'll get you one tomorrow. Okay, Foxy? I promise you that. Remind me. Chat, remind me. We'll get, we're getting Foxy a sleeping bag. No. You won't sleep in the dirt. You'll sleep on one of the beds. You just won't have any, uh... You just won't have any, uh... Anything to cover yourself. You'll have, like, no sheets. So... <laughs> So that's why we gotta bring you a sleeping bag. Dirt's comfy though. Dirt is comfy. I have slept on the dirt once. Long time ago. I don't even remember. I don't even remember when. But uh. It was interesting. It was an interesting experience. I've never slept in a sleeping bag. Well, you're gonna learn. It's like being- it's like being ra- it's like taking your sheets and wrapping them around your entire body and sleeping like that. That's what being in a sleeping bag feels like. VR chat keeps freezing and it concerns me. Tuck me in, dad. I imagine, yeah, it's like a burrito. It's very interesting. Tuck me in, Dad. I'll tuck you in here. Remember, I am Moose. I'm Moose Dad. Yeah, Moose Father. It's like it's like the Godfather, but I have two big big antlers, and I'm a pacifist. Sleepy time story. Yeah, of course. The once was a little girl who, who uh, in trying to find her parents, got lost in the forest. And so she went up, she lost, and she was so sad, cr crying through the forest. You know, please, mo mommy and daddy, find me, find me. And, along, and on one of the trees, she met an owl, and looked down at her and said, Why are you here, small child? She said, Will you, she said, Will you help me find my, will you help me find my mommy and daddy? To which the owl said, That's stupid. You're, you're stupid. Why would, why the hell would I help you? I'm an I'm an owl for I'm a talking owl for God's sake. I don't I don't know anything about like finding people. I want to find food. And you certainly look delicious. And the owl swooped down and tear, tore the girl's face off and ate it. It made a very tiny hoo hoo. Godfather with a little more maple syrup. Yes. Yes. Wait, I actually want a little more, want a little more maple syrup. The story sucks. You suck. It's German. Fun fact, penguins will brutally murder each other over a mate. <laughs> Say I'm getting mom, but that's me and I'm in a strange hell of being both mom and nut. You are both mom and, and daughter at the same time. That's fucked. That is totally fucked. I will not say that ever again. Fun fact, humans do that too. I mean, you're right, but goddamn. 
Good fucking lord. How does that work? How does that work? I'm not talking about it. The only thing I'm only gonna say- The only thing I'm going to say is Alabama and you will understand. All I am going to say is Alabama. Just listen to how to become your own grandfather and it all makes sense. Exactly. Ice Lord gets it. Penguins have a lot in common with humans, like murder and being gay. <laughs> gay penguins. <laughs> yes. Now this sounds really, really cool to me, just gay penguins. Very cute little tuxedos and creating social class systems. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so silly little penguins. Silly little penguins. That's not right. <laughs> Penguins should all be equal under co under communism. <laughs> I've said the word communism. Now the America Bros are coming. Just wait. Just gonna wait for them to completely raid my chat. <laughs> Penguins will be penguins. <laughs> penguins will be penguins, I agree. Can't blame them for their ice room talk. They're just penguins. <laughs> God. God, that's freaky thing to think about. I'm not gonna think about three penguins in a in like an igloo talking about how to, talking about how to talking about how to screw over the middle class. I'm a sleepy boy. Misogynistic penguins. Ah! How could... Mm. Mm. I'm legitimately about to be just like, you know what, sleep stream, let's go. Happy, happy boy, boy, happy, happy boy, boy. Tell us a bedtime story. There once was an ugly barnacle. It was so ugly 
But everyone died. The end. A nice head pats and forehead kisses. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, what? Alright, here's your head pats and forehead kisses. Come here. Ah. Ah. Okay, what did I walk into? <laughs> a real story, a real story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. <gasps> I have one. Wait, shh, shit. I do have one. I do have one. Fuck. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. Shit. Wait, wait. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. I have one. I actually do have one. I actually do have a. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for swearing. I just realized I do have a. I do have a bedtime story that I can tell. Ugh. I actually do have a bedtime story that I can tell. Right? Okay. You're all good. Get y'all comfy. You guys got comfy. Please get comfy for me. <laughs> yeah, but bear, you walked. Bear, you walked into a. You walked into story time with bedtime stories with, with a uh, moose. <laughs> okay. Ugh. See if I can read this. Everyone else best be comfy. Yeah, yeah. Everyone get comfy. Get comfy. It's bedtime stories with moose time. Okay. This one. My mother, my, my mother used to read this one to me when I was really young. It's called, it's called Comet's Nine Lives. It's uh, it's like so old. It's got, it has, it's missing its cover. But I think it would make a great, great story to read to like, if like my like my kids or, like if I donate it to a, like uh, a school a school library, they can be they can read these. So, uh, get ready. It's time to sit down, relax, and listen to Moose's bedtime stories. I hope you all can hear me nice and clear. Comet's Nine Lives. Comet was born 30 miles out to sea on Nantucket Island. He grew up wandering all over the island, staying a few days here and a few days there. One summer day, Comet stopped in a garden. Comet's a cat, by the way. I should probably clarify this. Obviously, because nine lives, but one day, Comet stopped in a garden to nibble some tasty looking foxgloves. First they made him feel woozy, and then he fell into a deep sleep. 
When Comet woke up, he felt fine, but different. Oops. He'd realized he lost he had lost the first of the nine lives that every cat has when they are born. Me Hugging my plushies, that's amazing. You do that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should find myself a home. And he trotted into the bookstore and settled down on top of a stack of bestsellers. Life was good, until one day it rained all morning and the islanders hurried inside for something to read. In the rush, Comet's tower of bestsellers toppled over and he was buried under a pile of books. Oh no! He had turned the page on life number two. I think I need some fresh salt air. Down to, down to the docks he went. When he and arrived just a little the Jean T was casting off. Once underway, an easterly wind blew up and Comet knew he had made a mistake. Up, up the Jean T rose. Down, down, down she flew on a following sea. Comet hung on until a huge wave foamed across the stern, and he found himself afloat on the high seas. The tide carried Comet back into the harbor, but as he flicked the salt from his whiskers, life number three went out with the tide. Comet was recovering on the beach when he heard music. It was the annual 4th of July concert. He climbed up a tree for a better look. The music reached its loudest chord. Comet got so excited, and he lost his grip and plunged down into a tuba. Three waltzes and a Sousa march later, Comet staggered away, and life number four had sounded its last chord. Comet spent the night trying to figure out what to do next. He wished there were another cat. He wished there was another cat around to ask if its lives were going by as quickly as his. Ne the next day, everyone was going up to an open window and coming down with ice cream. Comet was hungry, so we trotted after the crowd. The staff at the ice cream shop gave Comet his own bowl of leftover milkshake. He felt so welcome. That he, bur that he decided to stay, but all too soon an island health officer burst into the shop and spotted Comet. Furball, he cried. Feline residues, maximum infractions. Ugh. Startled, Comet jump and fell, jumped and fell headfirst into a strawberry shake. The staff pulled him out and he watched life number five fly off licking its paws. Maybe, maybe I'm trying too hard. Maybe it's time for some fun. He climbed into a bike basket. And just as a crowd of summer visitors were hurrying, just, just as a crowd of visitors were hurrying off the ferry. It was Waffle's first time. On the and off they went bumpity bump all around the island. Just as they reached the bottom of the last hill into the village, Waffles screeched to avoid a taxi. Screeched to a halt to avoid an oncoming taxi. Comet went flying off with life number six. I think I'll just walk the rest of the way. Comet was limping to buy the island theater when a poster advertising the last performance of summer caught his eye. A beautiful actress with a sweet smile looked out at him. Maybe she would like to take a cat home with her. Comet pr pranced happily onto stage and purred loudly. The actress sneezed. There's a cat in here, she shrieked. I'm allergic to cats! She spotted Comet and hurled her sequined he high heel right at him. Comet flew through the air into the last row. A 
The curtain had come down on life number seven. Fall breezes were blowing up as the summer visitors headed for the ferry. Comet wandered along, along the beach. He could see the red beacon of Brant Point Lighthouse in the distance. Waves crashed and pounded on the sand. The wind picked up and deck chairs and lobster pots flew by Comet. It was Hurricane Elmador heading straight for Nantucket Island. All Comet could see now was just the blinking lighthouse beacon. He ran toward it when a huge wave broke on top of him. The rushing surf carried Comet into an open doorway as life number eight washed out to sea. Dazed, he opened his eyes and saw a green light across the room. Meow? Someone purred. Meow? He answered, looking up. He was staring into the green eyes of a lighthouse cat. At that moment, he knew that he was home. And as fall days turned into winter, Comet knew exactly where for the rest of his life. The end. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's a case of if nobody answers, then that means the story was a was a success. Is that a good stream? Sorry, good stream, not good stream, good story. It's very Canadian. Nantucket Island is is Canadian. We love comment. <laughs> and if you look through the book, there's a little sub. There's like a little subplot going on, where the uh, the lighthouse cat and the lighthouse keep are. Uh... No, the lighthouse keep notices that. Uh... Hit the lighthouse cat is alone. And so they go out search for a new cat. Lonely cat seeks friend. You know, they put out a little message in a bottle. Lonely lonely cat friend seeks. The help wanted cat wanted inquire here you know they appear, and they also appear everywhere the, the lighthouse keep appears in ev on almost every page <laughs> so uh nice Happy little story. It's, again, it's the story my uh, my mother used. To, my, my mother read me way back in the day. I fell in love with it. God, I felt really good. Re I felt really good reading that to you guys. I'm sorry. One sec. One sec. Just in time, just ah, perfect timing too. Right as I finished the story, I received a dog.
I am, I am going to assume that Foxy is passed out. <laughs> ah, but yeah. Good, good story. Sad that had this book for so long that the uh, phone's no longer with us. Mm. Which is... Would you guys like me to read another bedtime story? I have a whole stack of like children's stories next to me. <laughs> yes, we stand from it. Oh, no, that's a. Uh, I'll just read you, read it to you, anyways. I'll read you the story, anyways. This story is called Verdi. Which, if you know, if... If you don't know, is a... I can't remember. I can't remember which language they use. It. No. I think it's... Is it Spanish? I think it's Spanish. I think, it, I think it's Spanish for a... Uh, uh, green. I know it's I know it's the word green, but I can't remember which language it is. Wait, Verdi. Here's your next here's your next bedtime story. So everyone, remember, hug your plushies or whatever. Hug your plushies, lay down under your covers, get cozy, because we're gonna read a new bedtime story. Verdi by uh, Janelle Cannon. It's got a few intro pages. Ah, there we go. On a small tropical island, the sunrise rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest, the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves. She called to her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Verdi dawdled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes of the jungle could tell him. Verdi ventured into the treetops to look for them. Ah. Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verdi peered at their droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare. Ch chided Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taken nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. Surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't you like lizards? Asked Verity. Don't interrupt. Umbles grumbled. Umbles grumbled. 
Dear me, whined Aggie. If I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verity tapped a tune with his tail as he waited to speak. S Stop that, Verity. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green. Always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verity couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them. And he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verity slipped away. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired. Dozer growled. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not only lazy and boring, they were rude. Ugh. At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will nip I will never be lazy, boring or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. Shoo. And Verdi does a little spiral shape in the air. <laughs> From a distance, the greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. Uh, this radio will be lucky to make it to his first molt. Aggie nodded. He's he's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles moaned. He may not live to turn green. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel. Revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. Gak! How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle and I'm still turning green! He raced to the river, grabbing up a mouthful of rough leaves. Verdi flung himself into the water. If, if I can't run this green off, I'll scrub it off! He thought. Scrub, 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 scrub. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder cruising the murky depths. Yum! The old fish hummed. Lunch! But the fish could. But before the fish could haul Verdi under, the frightened snake bit him on the nose. A poo! From the blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Verdi into the air, slapping onto the soggy shore. Verity skittled out of reach, skidded out of reach. Whew! Oh, that was close. He sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with le wet, gloppy mud. Hmm. Kind of lumpy. Kind of brown. Sure beats being green. He left the mud on. As Fox, as Foxy says. Just needs more mud. <laughs> but the soft brown mud muck dried into a hard gray shell and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As each piece fell away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible! Cried Verdi. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the tree. Okay, okay, okay. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight. The sure the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to Earth. Whippity, whippity, flip, flap, wham. 
plummeting through the trees, Verity landed in a crooked sprawl across a log on the forest floor. He couldn't move. Help. He croaked. As usual, the greens had been watching Verity's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this? Umbel said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed. Things lucky you still got good two good eyes. They gently lifted Verity up to a safer place, where they could watch over him while he healed. Neatly splinted to a tree ranch. Verity had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. <laughs> Remember how I used to streak, streak across the forest floor? Ribbon asked. <laughs> Quick as lightning, answered Aggie. And I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller then, you know. <laughs> the, th the things I dared to swallow. Umbles bragged. A wild boar were no match for me. Verity was astonished. <gasps> you used to run and climb and hunt uh, giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed, just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. And then old um Umbles here nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life. A warm perch, little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. The greens rambled on about their days of glory, and Verity settled in on his branch. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, Looks like you're ready to go again. He carefully untied Verity from his branch. You are welcome to c you are welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. He quickly, quietly back to the forest. Verity wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go, so he just stretched stayed put until the sun went down. He listened to the forest come alive. And it's a picture of uh, the forest coming alive. This little frogs, trees, birds, this little rat thing with a spiral tail. It's actually super pretty. Time passed. The sun and moon took turns in the sky. Verity marveled as the moon, full moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew round again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Verity became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures walked right by him without seeing him. One fine morning as Verity basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they as they start stared. Get a load of that green old green guy. One of them was one of them was weird. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously doubt it. They're just like I used to be, thought Verity. And now I'm what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me? He asked. With you? The yellows were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight. Verdi replied, though he was a little worried about putting his eye out. With, pra with practice, the three snakes performed a triple... A perfect triple figure eight. Leaping and looping with little striped friends, Verdi laughed. I may be big and very green, but I am still me. <laughs> and there's a little note about uh, snakes in the back page. There are about 2,500 species of snake. From tiny thread snakes just four inches long to gigantic articulated pythons that grow to 33 feet. Snake populations are native to all parts of the world except I Ireland, Iceland, New Zealand, and the polar regions. 
A snake's skin is dry, not slimy as many people believe, and their scales are tough. Depending on the species of snake, scales may be shiny and smooth, or very rough. Some snakes actually polish their scales by rubbing them with an oily secretion from a gland by their nose. While well, many snakes see very well, others are totally blind. Most use their nostrils to pick up scents. Snakes use an inner ear as well as other senses in their bodies to detect vibrations around them. Stump snakes have heat detecting pits in their face, faces that help them to hunt in darkness. All snakes rely on their delicate forked tongues. As the tongue darts out, it collects chemicals from everything it touches. When it withdraws, it passes over the vomeronasal organ in the roof of the snake's mouth. This organ processes the chemicals, providing the snake with important info about its environment. Snakes are carnivores, which means they eat animals. Their diets can include insects, reptiles, even other snakes, fish, fish eggs, birds, and, and rodents. Some of the bigger snakes will eat creatures as large as deer. Many kinds of snakes can go months without eating. About 25% of the world's snakes are venomous. Their venom is used to quickly paralyze prey and for self-defense. Although most snakes would rather flee than fight, it is smart to admire. Sorry, it is smart to admire all wild snakes from a distance. These often shy reptiles will appreciate your respect. Among the many, among the many non-venomous types of snakes in the family, is the family of giant snakes, Boidae which includes all pythons and boas. While boas are ovoviviparous, 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 meaning they birth their babies fully formed, pythons are oviparous, which means they lay eggs. Green tree pythons, Mar Marilia uh, viridis, mothers protect their eggs until hatching time, nearly two months. Once they emerge, their baby snakes are on their own. These hatchlings range in color from dark reddish brown to bright yellow. Approximately eight inches long when they hatch, these babies grow to about six feet. After several molts, their skin color changes to the rich green of a mature snake. The young snakes eat insects and small lizards, using clever techniques to catch other foods, such as wiggling the worm-like tips of their tails to lure their prey within striking range. Adults become adept at capturing birds by curling up and resting motionless in trees before striking. Their unusual coiling position allows them to operate very much like a spring. Green tree pythons use constriction or squeezing to immobilize their prey. Snakes are valued by humans for many reasons including their ability to keep rodent populations in check. These sensitive creatures are an important part of our ecosystem. And that, my friends, is the story of Verdi. Those are my two bedtime stories. I guarantee you I'm gonna go open up my phone and look and Foxy's gonna be dead asleep. It's gonna be the most adorable thing I've ever seen.
Oh, Foxy left. Okay. All right. <laughs> If you guys would like me to read another Moose Dad bedtime story, I will. I will absolutely read you guys another bedtime story if you want me to. <laughs> I appreciate every single one of you, by the way. I'm, I'm down. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Alright, alright, let's see. Ugh. Goodness gracious, I have a few other, um, Brain fart. Things. Things? Brain, what are you doing? You okay up there? Yeah, I'm okay. I don't buy that for a second. But alright. He needs a break. <laughs> alright. Hmm. Let's see what other books I've got over here. I would I I have Miguel Agat's pool over here, but uh, if I read that, I would be a basic bitch. <laughs> uh, right. Let's see. Alright, we've got a few here. You guys see me? Okay, there I am. You guys can see. Yeah, okay, you guys can see me. Alright. This one is called Laura's Star by Klaus Baumgart. Very, very short, but you know, we stand short stories. Let's see. For you and your own special star. That is what the title says. Sorry, let me. 
I'll turn myself up so you guys can hear me a bit better. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. This one is called Laura's Star. Okay. okay. I'm holding up my headset so I can read better. Yeah. I wish I had a friend, sighed Laura as she gazed out of her bedroom window. Someone special to share all of my secrets with. But there was no one listening. Only the, the distant stars that winked and glittered like tiny jewels in the night sky. Suddenly, something caught Laura's eye. A streak of silver came whirling and twisting through the darkness. She gasped at its, as it spun past her window, so close that she could almost touch it. Something wonderful and magical was happening. Laura quickly put on her robe and slippers and hurried downstairs. Outside the shadowy pavement, outside on the shadowy pavement, lay a little, lay a little star, shoot, shooting sparks and colors like a giant sparkler. You're beautiful, Laura whispered. She saw that a point of the star had broken off when it hit the ground. Don't worry, Laura said as she gently carried it back indoors. I'll soon make you better, little star. And up in her bedroom, she carefully put it together again. Laura later told, later Laura told the little star, oh wait, wait. She, uh, for context, there's, there was no text on the page. Laura used a band-aid to put the star to get back together. Laura later to told the star all of her secrets. It seemed more seemed to shimmer more brightly than before, almost as if it understood. And as Laura drifted off to sleep, she knew she had found a special friend at last. When Laura woke the next morning, the space on her pillow was empty. The little star was gone. Laura was desperate. She searched under the blankets and scrabbled through her drawers. She looked high in the closet and crawled low beneath the bed. But it was no good. She couldn't find the little star anywhere. Laura felt cold and empty, as if all the light had drained out of her. Surely the wonderful little star hadn't been only a dream. When Laura came home from the playground, Mom and Dad tried their best to cheer, cheer, up, cheer her up. How about your favorite dessert? said Dad. Don't you like my funny hat? asked Mom. I don't know why I made them British. Laura couldn't tell them why she was so sad. They would probably say that the little star was just her imagination. That night, Laura climbed wearily up to bed. A casual fanfic reader. Not all smut, just some good old adventures. I've. Uh, that's really cool, Ice Lord. I want to get into like some fanfic reading, but for some reason, some part of like whenever I see fanfic, my brain's just like kind of. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence about fanfic because a lot of it is just like, well, obviously a lot, a lot of it is smut, but a lot of it is also just f fiction that is not just not at all. It feels not at all in character with a lot of people. Well, not with a lot of. Not at all in character for some of the people, the people that are in the stories. So it just kind of, sort of sh switches my brain off, or not, not really switches my brain off, but just like sort of pushes me away. It's like that's not what that character would do. But you know, I'm happy that you find enjoyment in fanfic. That night, Laura climbed wearily up to bed. She saw she saw a strange glow flickering from her room. 
hardly daring, har, dare, what? Hardly daring to hope, she pushed the door open. The sudden blaze of light was dazzling. The little star was back just where she'd left it, shining like a thousand diamonds. At first, Laura could only stand and stare. Then joyfully, she ran towards it. I know what happened, she cried. Stars only come out at night. You must have been here the whole time, and I just couldn't see you. I should have known you wouldn't leave without saying goodbye. There's a picture, and there's a picture of her staring at the star from her bedroom door. The bedroom still has the star, still has the little band-aid on it. Laura and the little star had a wonderful time. They played games and did tricks, and Laura read her favorite book. But, but Laura began to notice something. The little star began to feel cold in her hand, as if it were fading away. Laura stroked the star gently with her fingertips as it grew colder still. She felt longing in it, and suddenly she understood why the little star was dying. Laura chose her four best balloons and carefully tied them to the star. You'll always be my special friend, she whispered as she opened the window and let go of the strings. Slowly the balloon drifted up into the darkness. And the little star twinkled at Laura as it grew smaller and smaller, until at last it joined all the other stars in the midnight sky. Laura didn't feel sad anymore, for her friend was back where it belonged. Each night when she went to bed, she could whisper her secrets into the darkness, knowing that, knowing that that little star was somewhere out there, listening. There's a picture of the of the night sky, with the, the little silver star in the corner. And that's Laura's star. A lonesome girl learns that friendship sometimes means giving away the brightest treasures. Yeah, stars. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are enjoying. Uh, why? Are you, what the? Oh, sorry. One sec. Over here. <sighs> All right, I got. Oh, what? What? Oh my god! My drift took you guys away again. Give me a second.
Why? Why? Why did the? Another one for you guys. I think this might be the last bedtime story. Because <laughs> I'm starting to fall asleep. Oh, come on. Alright, where'd you guys go? There you are. I want a bowl of mint ice cream. Sorry, sorry, son. We don't have mint ice cream. Uh, bro, I want mint ice cream too, though. This one, this story is called Rainbow Fish. It's by uh, Marcus Feister. Marcus or Marcus Fister, I don't know, however you pronounce it. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there was an or out oh, that lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple with sparkling silver scales among them. Among us. No. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. The beauty. They called him a rainbow fish. They would call. Come on, rainbow fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But the rainbow fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales just shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called. Wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They're so wonderful, and you have so many. You, you want me to give you, give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are? Cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all of his friends what happened. From then on... No one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They all turned away when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day, he poured out his troubles to the star to a starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you'll find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him in their glare and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have, give, have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea. You will discover how to be happy. I 
can't. That's the rainbow fish started to say. But the octopus had already disappeared in a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales. My beautiful shining scales. Never. How could I ever be happy without them? <sighs> Suddenly he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please. Don't be angry. I just want one little fish scale. Oh, weird. Only one very small shimmery scale, he thought. Maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. The little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little fish swim back and forth with his new scale glimmering in the water. The little fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing. So it didn't take long before a rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home with the other fish. Come on, there we go. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale yet left. His most prized possessions had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said rainbow fish, and happy as they splash, happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. Rainbow fish. Sounds like communism to me. <sighs> Alright, that's the last story. accidentally kicked my phone to the floor. Mm. Oh yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed bedtime stories with Moose. Those were all my bedtime stories. Well, not all of them. All the uh, really good ones. <laughs> I really do hope you guys enjoyed it because that was that was really digging up some childhood memories for me just little moose in bed this is my ma, ma reading bedtime stories to him Uh, thank you, thank you, Ice Lord. But you're not asleep. <laughs> Go to sleep.
damn near asleep. Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> Just that little bit more, we'll be fast asleep. <laughs> mm, sleepy boy. Poor girl. Sleepy Ice Lord. <laughs> nice, nice, comfy, sleepy stream. Let's go, let's go. I love you guys so much. <laughs> I love you guys. Again, truly, you guys are wonderful. I'm just like, we Happy moose. Happy moose. Happy moose. Also, also sleepy moose. Because those bedtime stories are really knocking me out. <laughs> God. For those just for those just joining us, I just read of like four bedtime stories, and like in a row, and it's like a big spell. It's like putting me to sleep. This is like woo, woo. <laughs> those bedtime stories. This is what happens when you ask Moose to read bedtime stories. They're too powerful. I just fall right to sleep. Never ask me to read bed. Well, I will. I will read bedtime stories again if you guys ask me to. Although, send me, send me like text bedtime stories, like something like on the computer that I can read or on my phone. Like send it to me in the in the in the like Discord, Discord channel, Discord server. I can read so I can read you guys more bedtime stories and pass out. <laughs> Such a because you guys are you guys are going to become spoiled and i enjoy that i enjoy that immensely 
You guys deserve it. You guys generally deserve it. Here, have some head pats. And big hugs. Come here. Come here, big guys. Come here, big guy. Big hugs. And forehead kisses. Mwah. All right. Ye. 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 <laughs> That's where my brain is at right now. I'm just here like, ye. Oh, I stood up. Oh, God, it happened again. It's like, I'll recall you guys. There you go.